side then with only seven surviving the thumping that they withstood in Paris last season. A new captain for the championship in Phil Matthews. David Irwin returns for his first cap since February 84. Kiernan's back as the wing this time in place of Crossan. Anderson in for Francis who's injured. And Pat O'Hara, a new face in the championship with newcomers to the championship also in Mannion, Ahern, John Sexton and Steve Smith. So in many respects it's all change and an experimental side up against it here at Lansdowne Road. France going for power and in Jacques Ferroux's expectations a mobile, explosive, dynamic pack. Verbizier returns to captain the side for the first time in the championship, his first international since breaking his arm in Argentina. Lafon comes in as a late replacement for Berro on the wing. Bourguignon is the new face in the second row, his first championship appearance and a massive back row that now includes Carminati back for Eric Chan. A back row I hasten to add with a total weight of over 15 stones and of course so much depending on this Bachadita, the uh, all-push non-striking scrummage that Farouz introduced to French rugby and their side oozing power. 60,000 here at Lansdowne Road. And is this man to be the architect, the young Parisian architect, Frank Medel, to kick off? Brian Anderson of Scotland in charge. And wait for it, the real early confrontation of the forwards. France with massive power, a lot of experience, but uh, perhaps unsettled by what happened in Bucharest against Romania. We shall see. Medel then starts. Verbizier back in action and hounded straight away. Well, disruptive tactics are what Ireland, I think, require, but uh, that time they were round on the wrong side after the Verbizier was in early trouble. Yes, we could see already the power of the French forwards, that uh, unlike the start of most internationals, it was a good kick-off by Frank Minnell and immediately put the Irish under pressure. Steve Smith, the Ireland hooker, his first championship game. Lenehan and Anderson, but it's long for Matthews. Worked well for Mannion. Sexton goes, Rajiske covers. There's John Sexton of the Lansdowne Club. Neat play by Fergus Ahern, his club teammate. And both with the baptism of fire in the championship. Comes down to Ahern now. Paul Dean. Ingo's Blanco. The ball is loose and it's unopposed. Brendan Mullins. What a superb high ball that opened up the French defence. Lafon and Blanco in real bother. It went loose and Mullin was on hand. And that's his 11th try for Ireland. and it's 6-0, six minutes played. Well, I think the referee, if he had the benefit of the replay, would be looking at David Irwin there, that certainly looked a couple of yards offside, but it's a super up and under here. We see that Blanco misses the ball, and there's Brendan Mullen picking it up, and those the exact tactics that Ireland want to pursue this afternoon, to harry the French as much as they can. Pierre Berbizier. France, of course, uh, using their hooker as the scrum half of the set piece line out Dean again it's a fine kick Blanco's in trouble up comes Kiernan but he's beaten on the 22 Irish possession again it's the hooker Steve Smith Phil Matthews Ahern straight through to Danaher trying to pin France back again and it's kept in just by Blanco but they stay in their 22 and Phil Matthews has really got the Irish uh, with their dander up. Oh, he has. He's certainly got them wound up and very clever. He's varying the line-outs because he realises that the French are pretty big in the line-outs, so he's calling two four-man line-outs. Penalty to Ireland. France not ten metres back offside. Kiernan summoned up to kick for goal.
chance to make it 9-0. Within nine minutes of the start. Kiernan. Got under it a bit, but it may be accurate. Yes! That's set that cat among the pigeons. So much pessimism abounding here in Dublin. But already a different aspect to this season's encounter. Maynell, once again. O'Hara of Sunday's well. Back from Condom. From Adria to Sela. Back goes Kean, an awkward ball. Lafon coming through, Ahern covering. Good clearance. Well, Jimmy Davidson, the Irish coach, has certainly got them in the right frame of mind. 13 minutes played. 9-0 to Ireland. Knocked through by Session. And the odd uh, fist going in. Well set up. Dean. Oh, in chases, it's a cleverly placed ball. The bounce not so kind. Andrea off the French player, not forward, offside, and a punch up develops again. The tension beginning to break out into the open. Seller contesting. Rodriguez as well, but looking very unpleasant. And signs of the French are more than a little worried. Yeah, they're very worried indeed, but also the Irish forwards aren't taking any prisoners today that uh, they're making certain that they're taking the game to the French. And uh, the one thing that Phil Matthews has to do now, he has to keep his players going. You know, he can't afford to let them relax. He has to keep driving the forwards. Well struck. What a great pick. 12 nil it is. And who would have believed that? The Irish selectors were desperate to get Michael Kiernan in the side and they moved him out of position onto the wing. And yet again, it's Daynell who has to restart. Back to Ahern. It's a tidy kick as well. Blanco comes up. Has a bit of room this time. Up comes Mullen with the tackle. Lafond outside, but Blanco round on the loop. Flicked inside to uh, Rodriguez. Then set back by Andrea, Bevisier, Lafon. Back inside there is Rodriguez again. Carminati. Knock on by Session. Uh, France, for the first time, really beginning to get to grips with it. Great support play. Well, that was French rugby at its best, and it just shows what these guy can, guys can do if they actually relax and let the ball do the work. So will the French shove disrupt? Well, Smith certainly got the clean strike. Untidy ball, Dean recovers. They're offside. The backs too eager to get up. And here's surely a simple chance, if there is such a thing in international rugby, for Michael Kiernan in front of the posts, a metre or two outside the 22. Lenehan with words of experience that come from 39 internationals. Can Kiernan make it 15-0? Oh yes! That, I feel, is a very important kick. And is Farouk's change of plan beginning to come to grief? Jean Condom. The tap down was by Rodriguez. Condom and Bourguignon in support. Menel standing close. Rebounds off uh, Paul Dean. Menel recovers but is in bother. The pack in support. Over the French 10 metre line. Back to Bebizier. Andre Sela. 3 to 2 here. Blanco up in the line. Lafon. It's up to Ahern. Lafond against the Hearn. Blanco's inside, but Lafond's in at the corner. Brilliant running.
This was super support play here. Just notice how they, the French backs just draw them out. You see Patrick Seller here commits the fullback. Serge Blanco straight out. And no problem at all here for Lafon that he manages to break through a good covering tackle by Fergus de Hearn. But in the meantime, the Hearn on the break. The fly hack through falls kindly to Blanco. His eighth appearance against Ireland. Serge Blanco back to position. The line out just outside the 22. Line out obstruction by France as they jumped across. So very quickly, a chance for Kiernan to pull back the points here. Well, three of them anyway. Just to make it 18-4. Michael Kiernan again. That was a superb pressure kick. He must have known the significance. So coolly done. And a 14-point lead looks good, despite the fact that Ireland have the wind gusting behind them in this first half. Maynell. Alive, alive-o from the crowd. It's early days yet. Maynell held. Matthews and uh, O'Hara doing well. Rodriguez now sending it back well. It's a penalty. Ireland offside. And that's head on to the post. And Berbizier calls up Lafon. Trying to put France within 11 points. The half time whistle approaches. Lafon slips on takeoff but gets it. So it's 18 points to 7, an 11 point lead as the half time whistle goes. One of spectacular excitement as Ireland have thrown down the gauntlet. But bear in mind, they change ends now to face the wind. They may be confident, but in no way can they afford to sit back. So Kiernan into the wind. Ahern, Dean. That's a worker. Blanco. That's a super kick by Paul Dean. I think one of the problems that he'll find in the second half that I think they'll find it a lot harder to kick against this strong win. So the early initiative falling to Ireland. Ahern again. He's doing well. I mean, that was brave and strong. On guys, McCoy. Ireland's back only six metres out. Still they go. France in all manner of disarray and struck offside. And concede the penalty. Well, I think if this were to go over, we'd see the French heads hang again. As Michael Kiernan has a chance to extend that lead. The crowd roar. The kick goes through. Magnificent. It was a magnificent kick, that, because not only was he wide on the touchline, he was kicking to a very, very stiff breeze. And that's just a fillip that the Irish needed at the start of the second half, facing the stiff breeze. Paul Dean waits the line out just outside Ireland's 22. What atmosphere building up here. The unexpected in sight, but not yet. Menel tries the Gallio in tactic. Danaher calls, it's still loose, anyone's ball. The French pack have it. Ten metres out. Le Bizier took the wrong option, surely, but Ireland are offside. And, well, it could so readily have been a try had Bevisier made the switch to the open side, but a chance still of three points. Lafourne then with a try and a penalty. Trying to add to it. There's the further three points. And that keeps the door open for France. 21-10 and 12 minutes into the second half. tells you just how uh, strong it is on the pitch. The odd mistake, Rodriguez to Andrea Lazisque. Beautiful little uh, 
break of direction to cut inside. Matthew setting it up. Ahern. Back goes Lajiske. And Blanco. Well, on a good day, he'd have been tempted to try and take Lafon and Lajiske with him and set up a thrilling counter, but makes a very tame kick for touch. And gives Ireland the throw-in. From Smith. Willie Anderson fighting for it. Did well. Ahern to Dean. Irwin. Bowled over by Rodriguez, but Rodriguez has come off the worse. Driven on by McCoy. Still there. Anderson again. Ahern. Mannion. Really ferocious tackling at times. That's the Ballymena lad. That's Smith. Lenahan. Ahern. Clever, drill, clever ball. Back goes Lafond. Ahern's there with him. In goes Kiernan. The Irish back are there. Smith. And Clancy drops it. Yeah, traditional Irish forward play there that they drove it. Up the blind side, they kept driving, but poor old Tom Clancy has had a couple of chances to get himself on the score sheet there, and unfortunately knocked on both times. Jean Condom, his half century of internationals up today. Morocco was the link man. Menel, Andrieu, Blanco in the line. Chased by Irwin, good tackle, but it's Lajiske. Try number 13 to match the one he scored against Ireland last year. And France claw their way back into the match and take the few opportunities that come their way. And let's just look for the support play here. Really, it was a missed ball by Manel that enabled Blanco to come into the line. But he's well covered by the defence, but really you've got to look at the angle of running that Legiske takes up here. Once Seller evades David Irwin's tackle, he's perfectly positioned there for the inside pass for a cracking try. Dean. For Irwin to chase. Accidental, I think. The collision. Lajiske to the rescue. Bevisier to Blanco. Charged down by Matthew, by uh, O'Hara. Well played by Menel, and off he goes. Carving his way up the middle. Frank Menel, the support from the front row. That's Portelan, the new prop. Bevisier held by McCoy, but it's Blanco now. France love it when it's loose. Carminati. Lafon inside, Blanco again, Rodriguez, brilliant play to Portolan, Lafon, now seven metres out, the whole length of the field, and still they win possession again, Menel who set the whole thing going, ten metres out, then over here, under, under the post comes Blanco, a sensational try, that covered the length of the field, and just showed the potential that was waiting to be realised. And France within three points. Magnificent play there by the French, but they were helped with some woeful tackling by the Irish that they had two or three opportunities to have stopped Frank Manel in his own 22 after Pat O'Hara charged the kick down. And then Michael Kiernan missed a couple of tackles there and really that they were absolutely crucial that uh, whilst it looked very impressive indeed, and super play by the French. They were helped with some very bad tackling. And the conversion points added by Lafon to make it 21 to Ireland, 20 to France. Blanco rounding off a sensational move here. Menel, again the tackle, but Mullen not firm enough, and eventually the overlap. A try to Serge Blanco, number 24. 21 points to 20. The match still raging as it has from the kickoff. Total endeavour and commitment. Problems for Ahern, picked up by Bezbizier, Carminati. 
driven on by Undas. Ahern still lies injured, but busy away from Inel. The threat comes, Andrea Blanco, Lafond inside, but Blanco pirouettes and finds Lajiske, covering his Kiernan, but he's inside him to go over, and France take the lead, Lajiske is static. With seven minutes to go, France go ahead for the first time. They come back from the dead, and Lajiske, the man to round it off, Lafond with the conversion. And it's all turned round. Five point lead, having been adrift by as much as 15 points at one stage. And with the uh, Ahern out of position, injured, this was the instinctive skills that we've come to love in French rugby. Lajiske cutting inside the covering Kiernan, who had that major problem of trying to check. Lajiske living up to his nickname of the Bayonne Express. So Jacques Ferroux, the coach, may have escaped the guillotine yet again. Ahern, Dean, Irwin, Dean on the loop, gets away, looks for support, it had overrun him fractionally. Popped up by Danaher, it's still there. Well, there seemed to be a French knock-on involved, but they've got away with it. Blanco, attempt to find touch. Referee Anderson blows the final whistle, and France have escaped. They've somehow risen like the phoenix from the ashes to turn around a game in which Ireland led for all but the last seven minutes. 26 points to 21, and Ireland must surely rue those earlier opportunities that could have set them on the road to one of the great upsets in rugby history. So near